क्या आप कनाडा में आने वाली एक नई खातून हैं नया मुल्क नया माहौल नए मसाइल और खानदान भर की जरूरियात ऐसे में आपको सही रहनुमाई की जरूरत है जो मैं दूंगी हर कदम पे काम की तलाश तालीम का हसूल या बच्चों की मैयारी देखभाल और इसके अलावा बहुत सी ऐसी मालूमत जो कनाडा में आपकी जिंदगी को आसान बना दें कामयाबी के इस सफर में मैं बनूंगी आपकी हम कदम basically what i'm saying here is that uh, if you are an immigrant from uh, to canada uh, and you want to start a new life here i can understand your situation you have uh, so many problems you have your own needs and then you have to also take care of the needs of your families so uh, what you need most in this situation is good advice and uh, the advice uh, can be related to education upgrading employment and uh, also opportunities like uh, affordable and uh, safe child care so you can get all of this uh, this information in this program and uh, i will basically i will be your companion in this journey in this journey of success so some of you might want to object to that word because it's not necessarily a journey of success for everybody who comes to canada and i have seen many many cases where people go back but uh, looking at my own experience and uh, looking at uh, many other families and friends who migrated to canada and who have lived here i believe that this country has a lot of potential and it has a lot of opportunities it's only that uh, people need a lot of advice and guidance when they first move to canada and they needs to be connected to sources of information and uh, if they get it in the first few years when they arrive here then they are sort of able to proceed in a direction that leads to success but otherwise uh, sometimes it becomes uh, sort of too difficult for people to continue with this journey and they either decide to go back or so basically what i want to do uh, under this project is to create a tv show which initially we uh, envisaged as having 10 episodes but uh, uh, right after when i went uh, and discussed it with the tv station uh, uh, with which i work uh, we realized that uh, a 10 episode program is not something which is enough to basically address all the issues and also to create the kind of viewership which we wanted to create because uh, in order to get a dedicated viewership you have to have weekly episodes because only then people sort of remember you and they want to because uh, a lot of people have a lot of time and uh, Uh, the need uh, information continuously so if you have something which is going on here weekly then you get a dedicated viewership otherwise sometimes people lose interest or they just forget about after a month they just forget okay on the first thursday of every month we have to watch this program or something so we decided that we will do a weekly program a weekly program is a huge huge commitment uh, because creating tv programs is uh, an expensive thing so uh, the, from the very beginning whenever i discussed this idea with anybody i got a lot of support and uh, the response was immense and the need was there so uh, the tv uh, station i work with that's a south asian tv channel it's a community tv channel uh, they do programming and or do hindi and punjabi which are like main south asian languages and if you know one language you can uh, understand all others so they sort of uh, committed to uh, basically carry it on 
uh, and uh, chip in their resources other than whatever I was uh, ready to commit for. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, Skills for Change was there. Uh, initially, of course, uh, I didn't know that I can rely so much on them, but then eventually for everything else, <laughs> which wasn't sort of uh, uh, funded, I would rely on them to give me the resource persons and experts. So that was like a huge, huge support. Uh, can you show the presentation, the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just sort of, uh, because uh, it's uh, slightly different from all other programs that are being done under this project, sometimes I get uh, a lot of questions. So I was thinking if I could sort of take you through the process about uh, what I'm trying to do. Uh, so Hamkadam is uh, uh, the title of uh, the uh, TV show. Hamkadam means somebody who walks with you in a journey. That's roughly how I can translate it. There may be a better translation for it. Yeah, so. Uh, so I also sort of want to look at uh, how we think about leadership. These are some of the definitions which I picked from the dictionary. So looking at these definitions, I feel that uh, even uh, some very ordinary women whom we don't consider, consider that they are leaders, they are leaders in their own ways, and uh, uh, they lead. Their, and especially when I look at many immigrant women, they lead uh, the way they lead their lives here, the way they manage uh, this whole change process. I believe they show great leadership potential, especially when we talk about South Asian families. Uh, uh, I have seen a lot of families uh, where uh, husbands are still either back home or they are working in Middle East and women are living here on their own and uh, they are not only taking charge of their own lives but they are also taking charge of their children's lives. So all of this uh, makes me think that uh, we should have uh, an alternative perspective of leadership. Leadership can be uh, different from women just being the business leaders and executives. Next slide, please. So these are just the barriers which uh, skills uh, for change uh, gender-based analysis identified, which women face uh, uh, in leadership. Next slide, please. So uh, this program is basically an attempt to overcome some of those barriers, though not all of them, I would say, uh, because the challenge is, uh, of course, huge and uh, it's very, very big. And uh, within this program, we can address only certain uh, issues, but uh, some of uh, the really important issues which I wanted to address were related to uh, uh, economic opportunities, were related to uh, education and upgrading of women when they come here and how they become the part of labor market. That's why a lot of programs which I uh, did, uh, a major bulk of them relates to uh, employment and opportunities of gained and paid work. So, um, uh, what I can <laughs> okay. uh, So each episode uh, identifies services and resources uh, around that particular topic. For it, but there are things like which came out of those uh, programs which I did. Like initially, we said like we will do job search and we will do. Uh, programs on skills trades, but then I realized that uh, something also needs to be done about apprenticeship and uh, bridge programs. So there are like many new areas which are coming up other than what we initially identified. Next slide. So these are some of the programs which uh, we have either done or we have research available to sort of do. Next slide, please. So these are some of the things which I also want to cover because I understand that these are really, really important issues for women and they can't move forward without these things. Uh, so uh, this is the process which uh, we usually follow, like we identify a topic, we do some basic research. From that research, we um, try to come up with a script and identify experts and role models 
and after that, uh, like we do the recording, although there is an entire process of post-production, but uh, that doesn't so much relate to me, uh, the TV station takes care of it. So, I have recorded four programs, uh, but I want to record uh, ten programs before we start airing them, because I work full-time. This is something which I do part-time, and uh, I do another TV program as well. So <laughs> in that sense, I just want it to be in a safe place when I start airing the programs because I do it on, I do all the recordings on Sundays. So there are times when I can't, and I have three children too, so there are times when I can't sort of uh, do recordings uh, a couple of uh, weekends. So I just wanted to be sure that there are no gaps when we start airing that. So uh, a few words about the program. I personally benefited from this program uh, greatly. Uh, when I came, uh, became a part of this program, I was fairly new in Canada. I'm here for three years now. So in that sense, uh, when I came here first, I didn't have uh, any net. I had a job uh, and I had a family. But beyond that, I had no network, nothing other than people I knew at my workplace. But there was so much work that I needed to, to do. So I, in that sense, I sometimes felt very, I would say, lonely. And I felt that uh, I have to sort of nothing to fall back on. But uh, being a part of uh, the skills of change, that gave, uh, gave me that network. Because luckily, my work, the job I do, that uh, it also sort of relates to ethnocultural communities. And the organization I'm working with, there were not many resources there because it's a mainstream organization and they just work, uh, they have so far been working only with the uh, uh, Canadian and French speaking communities. So I needed a lot of resources and context to actually do my job other than this, which is my passion. And I, of course, uh, uh, got immense support from Skills for Change for this work. But other than that, even for my job, there were so many resources which I was introduced to and I benefited greatly from them. Like uh, they are running uh, a health uh, uh, training for internationally trained professionals and uh, the project I'm doing, uh, it needs uh, people who are internationally trained, skilled uh, healthcare professionals. So I uh, recruited people from that program. Uh, everybody is looking at me and they want to finish <laughs> mentioning these last few things which are really important because personally speaking uh, I benefited so much from it from being part of uh, this network and knowing all these people last week I did a workshop with then then like I got a lot of support from other leaders of residence Sunitha then then Shabnam, Leslie Wagner, I have never met her, but <laughs> I know that every day there is so much which I just can't achieve without them. So thank you so much. Thank you.